I was born in Junction City, Kansas, uh, November 8th, 1952. And we lived there for about a year and a half and moved to California. And then when I was nine years old, moved to Topeka. And I've been here ever since. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Was your family a military family? No, my father was a pastor. He pastored the Church of God okay. there in uh, Junction City. So I was born when uh, he was still in his pastorate there. Then he got an assignment in Elsinore, California. So that's why we moved out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you came to Topeka about when? I came in 1961. I was nine years old. Uh -huh. So you were in elementary school at that point? Yes, I was. Okay, what, mm -hmm. do you remember what elementary you went to? Oh yes, went to Monroe Elementary. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandparents lived right down the street on 17th Street, and so um, Monroe was the closest school. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, and what was or is your career right now? My career, I work for Topeka Public Schools. I'm the Director of Certified Personnel and Equity. Um, so after a career of teaching and then being an administrator with the district, now I'm in Human Resources. <laughs> certified Personnel, so that is hiring um, certified individuals uh, to teach or to be administrators in buildings. Um, so people who hold a certificate with uh, Kansas State Department of Education, those are the ones that I hire typically. And then Equity. And and so uh, for years I've been involved in equity work and our district has as well. And so um, I am continuing uh, co-facilitating that work with our superintendent, mm -hmm. Dr. Tiffany Anderson. Equity is a big word. It's a big word. What does mm -hmm. that actually mean in day-to-day mm -hmm. -day practice? Definitely. Well, it assumes that um, we have the capacity to treat everyone um, with equality, so based on their level of need, we have the capacity to be aware of what they need and provide what they need as an individual, and that there be um, kind of a balanced fairness among all students, all staff, all patrons, uh, based on meeting those individual mm -hmm. needs. Well, what I noticed at Monroe, um, because it was a neighborhood school, it was primarily African American. We had one white family family, a young man and his brother. The young man was in my grade level. His brother was a little younger. And then we had a few Hispanic students. But other than that, the majority were um, African-American um, children. And um, it was really a healthy, uh, vibrant, um, oh, um, very nurturing type of a setting. And the only reason I think I noticed a difference was because my family moved when I was going into sixth grade. So I moved to Highland Park North. And there it was just like, it, it, the world had been turned upside down, just the total opposite. Um, I was happy there, but I really did notice a difference in the building climate mm -hmm. and in the investment it seemed that teachers had in the children and even how, um, you know, uh, how they, at Monroe, your relationship with the teacher extended beyond the school day or even that school setting. Uh, Highland Park Central, no. no. <laughs> End of the day, it was over, you were done. Okay, can you help me? I don't know where Highland Park Central was located. I mean, I'm sorry, Highland Park North. Highland, Highland Park, Park North, North, I'm sorry. Okay. At Highland Park North was uh, where the Antioch Family Life Center is. Oh. So it was on uh, 20, um, 20th, I guess, and, um, Indiana. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, you felt a difference in the classroom. Was your mm -hmm. class still mixed? Or? No, so it was pretty much the opposite. There may have been, oh, five children of color, including me, um, at my grade level and then all the rest of the children were white. Now we all got along. I don't remember racist issues within the classroom. I remember my teacher, Mr. Bush. I really liked him, but there wasn't the relationship that I enjoyed with Miss Counts, who I still have a relationship with today. Mm -hmm. So I think, and you know, I don't know if it was the cultural thing or maybe um, her willingness to invest in our lives, as well as the principal. Um, you know, he would, his sister would come up for the summer. He'd have me and my sisters uh, spend our days with her so she wouldn't be by herself. So, you know, it seemed like there was an extension of family. Uh -huh. Went to Highland Park Junior High mm -hmm. and then to Topeka High. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, my grandfather had passed, so we moved back uh, to be with my grandmother on 17th Street. So we went to Topeka High. What was Topeka High like at that point? Topeka High was a very interesting place um, because there was segregation, it seemed, within the building, and maybe not intentional, but, um, you know, the uh, African American kids had their own floor. <laughs> and uh -huh. um, because if you wanted to see your friends when you came in to school, you'd go up to the second floor, and that's where they would all be congregated. Um, and that was just kind of I don't I don't know that it was planned that way but it was just kind of uh, unspoken uh, territory that mm -hmm. this is where we go a uh, school day um, so that'd be pretty much it we'd arrive at school um, uh, then kind of separate go to classes maybe meet up in the lunchroom at lunchtime and then after school uh, usually out on the veranda was then where we would pretty much gather over on the east side of the veranda. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't know if it's just, but I had friends of all colors, so I don't know that it was a, a overt racial issue. I think it was maybe where we felt comfortable, mm -hmm. but um, definitely there were, um, those types of things. But then there were other things that weren't, you know, quite as innocent or unassuming. You know, there was the overt um, racism among uh, count a counselor, I suppose. Uh -huh. It ended up being one that a lot of us could name who had told all the African American, well, had told quite a few of my friends when I later went back and researched um, that we were not college material and that we should go to secretarial school and that mm -hmm. we would be good secretaries. And um, so when I was doing my doctoral dissertation uh, research, um, I just went through and I've tried to find out how many of us had earned a doctorate or you know postgraduate degree. And so I interviewed each of those individuals. We all had the identical story, but she was the one that pushed us <laughs> because of <laughs> what she said to do the best we could. I did go to secretarial school. <laughs> I believed her, but I was glad I did because when I had to type up my dissertation, you know, I had these great typing skills. <laughs>